We're talking with Richard Manner, who was a member of the Angles Collective and the um, prime editor for about 14 years. Hello, Richard. Hello, David. Could you tell us something about your uh, early years, your background? Um, okay, I was um, born in, uh, in BC, in Victoria. Um, grew up in Port Alberni. Uh, spent my school years there before leaving to go to University of Victoria and then UBC in Vancouver. Um, the year you moved to Vancouver would have been? 81, I guess. So we had already started our Vancouver Gay Community Center newsletter before you got here. Right. And did you come across that? Uh, I must have. I don't remember where. I knew of it because um, after I'd kind of settled down in Vancouver a bit, um, I went looking for the newsletter um, people who were putting it out because um, so I, I thought I should get involved in it. Um, I In Nelson, um, I'd been involved in setting up a community newspaper. Um, and in fact, before that, through the... the uh, Environmental Law Association was involved in their newsletter, um, writing and um, researching articles, editing, and I liked that kind of work. I found that it was something that um, uh, used my skills in a productive way. It was the kind of work that I felt comfortable with. You know, um, um, I thought I could do some useful kind of work with that. So, um, following. Uh, because that was my interest, I was looking for the uh, gay newspaper in Vancouver and came across the VGCC newsletter, as it then was. Found out when the production was happening, went down to volunteer my services. And just to fill in some background here, um, when the communities, I, I personally was involved in helping start the, the uh, Vancouver Gay Lesbian Community Center. and as a board member when we had some difficulties with our first few issues uh, I as a board member was asked to uh, go in and with another member and help set up the newsletter committee and, and was involved in that uh, for two or three years and I, I remember when you and several other people came on board all at the same time mm -hmm. and uh, I don't remember you working on it specifically individually but I remember you and uh, and uh, maybe you can recall for me who those other individuals were but you came and said at that point we were feeling uh, kind of run down and burned out and you came in and said you know we're willing to bring some new energy in here but we want to change it into a newspaper do you remember who those other individuals were at that time that kind of joined you in that effort um. Probably Fred Gilbertson, mm -hmm. um, Neil Whaley, perhaps. That's right. And uh, I can't, um, those are the ones I can remember. I'm sure there were one or two others, but I can't remember who they are now. Yeah. So, at what point in time? I mean, had you, you'd already been doing a little bit of editing and work with the newsletter, and yeah. and how did you guys come to the conclusion you needed to kick it up? <laughs> The, the newsletter um, group was set up, it was supposed to be a rotating um, coordinator, I think, um, where one person would take the job for a month or two um, at a time so that nobody had, was stuck with it for too long. Um, and uh, whoever it was at the time, it might have been you, David. I think it was. I was getting burned out, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was having a hard time finding anybody to take over the job. Um, and I think the person before you, Lynn... Lynn Guy? Lynn Guy mm -hmm. um, had said the same thing, that, that she wasn't going to take the job again because she was afraid she'd never get rid of it. Um, and uh, not, having, not having that experience at that point, um, I think you asked me if I would take it over for a month, and I said, oh, sure. My recollection is that um, some of those people, I think Neil got involved, Neil has a background in journalism. Um, his interest was probably similar to mine, that uh, it was a way that he thought he could get involved in the community using the skills that he had. Um, I, I had the impression, and I guess maybe I was wrong, that you and Neil and 
Fred had had a discussion about this and thought that it was time not only to put new energy into it, but it was time to uh, do it almost conditionally on on uh, getting the board to support it, it change, being changed to a newspaper. That came a bit later, I okay. think. I think uh, we worked on the newsletter in for several months um, in its existing format before we had any idea of um, changing it. We wanted to uh, use the community, use the newsletter, um, not so much as a way of um, as a house organ, right? Mm -hmm. um, not just to talk about the VGCC, but as more of a community organizing tool to, to create a sense um, that there was a very um, large, diverse community in Vancouver of lesbians and gay men, um, and to sort of just show what some of the dimensions, show what, what it was all about, and talk about, uh, talk about issues. The impression I got was that you, I know I had been as well, uh, the group of you had been inspired by the body politic and its collective approach. Mm -hmm. That was certainly a model. Um, I expect that we talked about it. Um, I don't think we intended to create anything no, really like the body politic. My vision, at least, I'm not sure if I should speak for the others, um, was much more modest that uh, that Vancouver as a community needed some kind of um, um, a medium for self-reflection, to sort of look at itself and uh, through that become more uh, politically coherent, organized, um, politically effective. And that the uh, the newsletter was a convenient way of doing that. Essentially, you know, it was it was something that was already in place, um, just needed to be uh, expanded, focused, um, bring more people into it. So, so at what point did you believe or come to believe that uh, a vital component of that would be a collectivist or? Uh, uh, collective kind of organization? Uh, yes, with using consensus as decision making, because that, that was one key way in which we w were quite similar to the body politic, it went once it developed. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that came out of my background with environmental organizations. Um, the ones that I was involved with in Nelson were uh, essentially collectivist organizations. And I think that was pretty common in, in the environmental movement, and I think more broadly at the time. It was influenced by feminism, I have no doubt. Um, I would, um, the idea of a non-hierarchical organization um, where everybody contributes the skills that, um, that they have, and, and through a very diverse um, meshing of skills, interests, abilities, um, you create a much stronger organization rather than one that um, is directed from the top. And being um, a community organization, you know, trying to represent a very diverse community, um, trying to encourage people to participate in the newsletter, um, I think we felt that it was uh, important that it shouldn't be an executive type of organization, that everybody who participated should be, uh, should be welcome, should be, be able to contribute equally, um, and that uh, we would share ideas, um, you know, discuss them, work them out, and come up with a better, um, better way of approaching problems. So the commitment to a consensus approach grew over time, and it didn't come, it, you didn't bring that with you initially as this is the way it ha needs to be? Um, well, I didn't bring it into the newsletter because the newsletter was um, an organ of an established organization, uh, which was an executive organization. So that, but that... at the time, when it got to the point where we felt uh, we could create a new organization, at that point we said, okay, this new organization, we want to make a collective uh, rather than an executive organization. 